Texas. Oh, is it going already? Yeah. Let me make sure this is going. Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of Wacom Texas, the show where you dream past the part. And we screencast some art. I'm Jay Myers. I'm Chris Kerr. And uh, we're going to do things a little bit different today. Um, I feel like we always do things a little different. We're going to do things a little bit different like always. And the topic of today is, you can kind of see the picture here, it looks pretty awesome, the detail. But the topic is, tell me if you can guess this one, Chris. You dumb mug, get your mitts off the marbles before I down your mush and tell your mole to hand over the... Hold on for that last word. The, oh, darn it, I should have maybe put a mark on it. it sounds like you, maybe, you might, um, yeah, so uh, your Mizuma, that's it, Mizuma. Gold Rush, like a Gold Rush to the, uh, no, Rush get, to the West? No, let's try it one more time. You dumb mug, get your mitts off the marbles before I down your mush and tell your mole to hand over the Mizuma. You sound like a Chicago gangster. Actually. That is correct. All right. Today's theme is Chicago Gangsters. You know, uh, that's where we film here is in Chicago. That's where our studio is. We live here. And we know that a lot of you are all over the world, really. With some uh, and, uh, white. And some what? White. Yeah. And some of you are from the European countries. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of our culture. So we thought we'd share some of it today. And that is... Do you need the right point size? Uh, I can actually make this work. Okay. And that is uh, Gangsters. That's kind of a theme here in Chicago. Everybody always... Is talking in gangster talk. Um, they're walking the gangster style. They're rocking the they're suit rocking still. The style, yeah. They're rocking the style. Actually, um, yeah. If you live in Chicago, you already know this is kind of old hat for you. But um, every conversation revolves around Capone and Dillinger and, and gangsters, um, and baby face, Tommy guns, and um, Tommy guns. No, you know what they call a Tommy gun back then? They'd call it a Chicago typewriter. That's how ingrained it is in our culture here in Chicago. Yeah. Um, no, they still say it. They'll, like, we have a um, conceal and carry typewriter law. That's what they call it. Um, can you hear me black? Well, I don't think you can actually conceal and carry a um, Tommy gun, but is that okay, point size? Yeah, it's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, but one of the things that goes along with the gangsters a lot is the gangster sling, and that's what that yeah, dumb mug, that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, and then I actually have a, you know quite a bit here as far as a little uh, dictionary you know of what? gangster can you, slang. Can you go back? I need a smaller point size. Yeah, do you want me to undo that? Yeah, I can undo that. So uh, edit, step backward, step backward, step backward. So we're back me, to where uh, we yeah, were. Like a 30 point size. Okay, so much smaller. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, Something that's like good. That. Okay. That's great. Oops. There you go. That's great. Thank um, you. So... So let me show you. I mean, let me just tell you a couple of these of the lingo that they would would talk. So um, a croaker, that's a doctor. Um, the big one is death. Oh yeah, I hear that a lot. Big house is jail. So a lot of the stuff is pretty common to us Chicago. Um, There's bad natives. words like broad, right? Broad is is. We don't say that. That's not part of our. It's, well, it's a little bit. Um, I feel like kind of derogatory. Yeah, a little derogatory. Uh, cabbage is money. So like whenever I'm like, hey, Chris, I'm going to go get some chips. Uh, do you want some? If so, give me some cabbage. That means, hey, man, give me some money. <laughs> um, cat, like, oh, man, he's a crazy cat. That's a guy. I don't ever remember telling you to get cabbage. Well, um, to get money? Kind of. This gun is not really looking too good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fine, dude. It looks this good. This gun turned into more of like a... a top hat. Yeah, <laughs> It's all right. I might be able to pull it off here. Hey, can... uh, you're going to take me down to the clubhouse. What do you think that means? Uh, grave. Nope, that's the police concrete. station. Oh, I didn't know that. It's a police station. Uh, creep joint is a is a whorehouse. <laughs> I didn't mean to read that one. Uh, diapers is pin your diapers on. Is get dressed. Huh. So, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. Some people take it more seriously here in Chicago. <laughs> it looks good, man. It looks like a, kind of a goth birthday cake, but anyway... <laughs> That's uh, duck soup. Easy, a piece of cake. Duck soup, which is great because that's um, a, a great movie by the Marx Brothers. Uh, dogs is feet. Hey, you got big dogs. Means you got big feet. 
Oh, yeah. I do, actually. I have size 14s. Um, uh, electric cure is electrocution. I'm, I'm not really sure. It would be faster just to say electrocution than to say electric cure. But anyways, you get the idea. Oh, Finn is $5 bill. It's a lot of fun. You can actually look this up online like we did. Uh, but a lot of the lingo we actually know just from being here in Chicago. You know what you just Googled it? I just Googled, yeah, gangster. I think just gangster. Um, I don't actually remember. That would help be helpful, huh? Yeah. Gangster talk or something like that. Can you hit me with a slightly larger point size? Okay. So, you know. That's good. Okay. So we like to have a theme on the show, but we also like to teach you a little bit about history. We like to teach you a little bit about culture. We're very cultured here uh, on Wakeham, Texas, and we're, and we're very happy to share that with you. Um, now, hey, hold this... On one second. Don't forget to watch the um, hand cam. Um, we have the hand cam that lets you follow along at home and actually do the drawing. And you can see um, what I'm doing with my hands so you can make Mimic the exact it. same drawing. Yeah. What you could do is probably enlarge that literally just watch that and move your hand in the exact same motion he is. It'd be interesting to see what you did, but if any of you have time, do the exact same motion that he did and see what kind of drawings you can come up with. It'd be really cool to see that if they are able to mimic Chris Kerr's art. Um, That's not a bad idea. It would be, that, that'd be a cool contest, maybe coming down the, down the pipelines. But if any of you have... You could also, yeah, um, they could upload it to our Facebook, right? Oh, absolutely. Upload it to our Facebook, share it with us, send us an email at wakeemtx at gmail.com. Yeah, I would, get, I would get a real kick out of that. Well, we would. A real, uh, it would be fun to find a term that would be like... You know, uh, I would get a real uh, uh, fog out of that. It's to shoot. So I'd get a real to shoot out of that. I'd get shoot, a real fog. Real shoots and giggles. So now this, I'm looking at several gangsters here, and I think that looks a lot like the one and only Chicago gangster John Dillinger. That is correct. I knew it. Mostly now, because he, he was, um, uh, you know, uh, put to sleep, or I don't know what the term is in gangster term. I can't find it here, but maybe drift is to leave. You know, he left, he drifted away from this earth. Well, it's interesting you say that because he was actually shot outside the IMAX theater at Navy Pier near the Children's Museum by the FBI in 1934. Oh, uh, wow. He died on Navy Pier right outside the IMAX theater. I, I actually saw Bat one of the Batman movies there, so I really felt connected to him at that point. Yeah. Very now, you can actually learn a lot about this. Gangster tours in Chicago are a dime a dozen. They're all over the place. Um, like I said, it's engraved in our culture. But So, John Dillinger, let me give you a little history on D John Dillinger. There's several Chicago, notorious Chicago gangsters. Can you some he, red? He, okay, I was... <clears throat> Sorry. Some dark red? Yeah, or, good. Or like some Bright. Bright red. Like that? Yeah. Hold on, that's more pink. Like poison apple red. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So he's not a gangster in the Capone sense, but Dillinger was a bank robber. And he's got a lot of ties to Chicago in the... Oh, wow. Okay. The sight of blood really makes me... Makes <laughs> he me was shot by nauseous. the FBI, and I don't know if you ever see anybody get shot by the FBI, but we're not talking about one shot. We're talking about open fire. Um, is there any, are there any words that talk about getting, like... Shot? I'm going to... They turn uh, him into Swiss cheese. So he's got a gat there. That's a gun. Yeah, he's got a gat in his arms. And he's turned into... Swiss cheese is probably pretty good. Uh, he's a real goon. He was kind of a thug. Um, uh, let's see. Hitting all eight is... is uh, he, he's not in good shape. So he wasn't hitting all eight in this because that means he was in bad shape. Yeah. He point. was kind of a hood, Remember, which is a criminal. Um, for interest, you want to take the blood off the um, composition. Yep. Um, because it implies there's even more blood than you're drawing. So there's some that settled into the concrete exactly. there. Exactly. So now going back to his uh, history, is uh, Dillinger got started with petty crimes. Really, you know, he started with um, stealing chickens. Uh, he tried his first robbery at the oh. age of 21. It didn't go so well. In fact, he was sentenced to 10 or 20 years in prison, but he was paroled in 1933. So, Honestly, the best way to learn how to rob banks is to go to prison for a while because you get a lot of good tips and tricks. And maybe that's where he learned his. Other, yeah, so like him, maybe steal a couple chickens, get put in prison, and learn how to yeah. rob banks. It's very difficult to learn that stuff on your own to self teach yourself robbing banks. It's much easier in prison. Um, As right, you know, a blood um, spatter analysis, like if you get shot with Tommy guns, there's going to be a lot of spatter. Okay. There might. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and pooling. 
Uh, probably get some over here too. Go ahead. That's all right. Okay. Um, whew, can't look at this one. He was again jailed after a bank robbery, but was broken out of jail later the same year. Dillinger and his accomplices robbed banks, and they did it with style. And that's what kind of put these gangsters on the map. Is they got on, they got in black and white. And I'm not talking about in movies. They got well, they did get in movies, but they got in the newspaper business. Yeah. Newspapers love these guys, and they put them all over the all over the, the place. Um, so him and his accomplices robbed banks and they did it with style. They would use ruses and phony stories like they were bank alarm salesmen or film directors looking for locations oh, for a bank actually, robbery scene. A so idea. they would disguise themselves as talented filmmakers and in reality they were talented bank robbers. Did you ever see that movie Point Break where they dress up like I've never um, seen Point Break. president masks to rob banks? Oh, maybe I have. When I was younger, that. I think. It was an older movie. I don't know. I don't remember that one. Can you hit me with um, um, some white and a really small point size? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe around. That's yeah, good. That's good. Yeah. It's really small. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, can I get a word in real quick? What you can? Can you get white? Can I? Can I say something real fast? Oh sure. I was just going over the history of John <clears throat> Dillinger, the guy you're drawing. But go ahead. Okay. We have blood stain here, and then we have blood um, pooling. When you have blood pooling. <clears throat> One good thing to do to make it look more like a pond is to have shiny marks around the uh, the edges, and that lets you know that it's pooling on the ground. And that it makes is cool. It just kind of pop a little bit. Um, yeah. So. So what you're learning here is how to draw um, pieces of art, learning a little about history, learning a little about a little a little bit about culture of Chicago. So we're really giving you the works in this episode, and I'm pretty um, excited with this drawing, too. Everybody likes a little bit of violence. The blood is a little bit overwhelming, but if you think of it just like as paint or something else, for those of you a little bit more sensitive like myself. Um, Dillinger and his men roamed the Midwest, stealing more than $300,000 from dozens of banks. Now, you think $300,000, oh, big deal. You know, we go through that in a day. You can buy a Ferrari or something. Well, back in 1934, let me tell you, that was a like, lot of money. Like four hundred thousand dollars. That was yeah, probably like four hundred or possibly even like five hundred thousand dollars. I don't know what the exchange it's rate like half is. Half a mil. Half a million dollars in in, in one year. Uh, that's more than I make. <laughs> more than Let's I make just say sure. that. It's more than I make. Now uh, his main hideout was in Chicago, and reports say that only weeks before his death, he attended a Chicago Cubs game. And uh, everybody that's from Chicago knows the Cubs and the notorious. Um, they were. They don't win ever. They don't ever win. They people only watch them because it's on WGN, right? Yeah, I think it's free. Yeah, free it's free. Watch. Most people like the app too. Most people really like the socks that actually. Live it's like ten bucks or something. Yeah. Um. And after a setup, Dillinger was killed by the FBI at the IMAX theater um, on Navy Pier in July of 1934. So. He had kind of a short run, really. Yeah, he got he out of really jail did. in 1933, was shot in 1934. Somehow, between that time, he earned $300,000. Oh, so oh, I don't know. Even Michael Jackson lived to be 50. I think Michael Jackson lived longer than John Dillinger. Yeah. Make sure when you're drawing pavement, you want to make it really dirty and crusty. Actually, look in the hand cam, and I'll, I'll point to the areas in the hand cam. Actually, I've lost my cursor. Here we go. Um, you want to have stains, so really, like we talked about in the past, reduce your opacity 50%. Um, and then the small cracks, um, most pavement cracks, especially in Chicago, we get 15 degree temperatures and then it can soar to the hundreds during the summer. So um, really a tough atmosphere for concrete. So you're welcome with this layered episode. You are welcome. And thanks for watching. Texas. Texas.